All right, Georgia week. Um, had the guys in yesterday. They did a nice job getting themselves back from a late game and uh, prepared for what we had to do on Sunday. Uh, that will continue today and uh, into tomorrow's practice. Our players of the game offensively was Bo Nix. Uh, on the defensive side, uh, there was really a lot of the players on the defensive side, so most of the defense uh, did a very good job there, so we recognized uh, that unit. O-line MVP was Keandre Jones. D-line MVP was Colby Wooden. And then uh, our special teams player was Joko Willis. So those are the guys that, that we had as players. Um, as far as this week, uh, just back into practice on Tuesday, um, a continuation of things that I've been talking about before, of just our preparation, our focus. And we're playing a very good football team. Georgia um, is complete in all three phases. When you watch them, you pop on tape. Uh, you can see why they have the record they do and the type of performances that they've had. Uh, they got very good players. They play hard. They're well coached. And that shows up uh, on a consistent basis on film. So uh, really a credit to them you know, for the type of consistency that they've shown throughout this season. And uh, they got a lot of great players, too many to mention, uh, but some guys that, you know, really stand out on, on all three phases, really. And I know they make that important, um, <clears throat> and they coach that, and they emphasize a lot of things that uh, make them a good football team. So we've got to do those same things uh, as far as our preparation goes of emphasizing the stuff that's important, making sure that we're detailed in those areas, and then coming out and having a good week and getting ourselves prepped and ready for – for this game. Our guys should be excited. It's a new week, new opportunity, new challenge against a really, really good team. And you know, hopefully, most importantly, it's a chance for us to kind of build off of what we've done this season so far. I was very proud of our guys for the LSU win, being on the road, and the different challenges that you have to face when you are on the road, and you find a way to win against a good football team. Um, and they were certainly excited about that. Now we got to shift gears and be completely focused on our preparation and the things we have to do in order to go out there and play our best football this Saturday. So I uh, don't know about their quarterback situation. Um, you know, JT Daniels is very good. Stetson Bennett, um, been very impressed with him. Uh, their running backs, all very good. O-line does a great job. Tight ends, uh, Bowers, you know, very good player. Um, and then on the perimeter, you know, the wide receivers, those guys, you know, they, they can make plays, they can go. Defensively, you know, the last performance that they had, um, you know, very good when you have a shutout and you're able to do that, that's, that's impressive. And against a good football team in Arkansas, so you know those guys really played well in that game. You can see that. Um, and, you know, they're, they're playing at a high level. Uh, so that's going to be a great challenge for our offense as we put together a plan to go out there and try to score points. Um, special teams had a big block in the last game. Um, you know, we talk about that as well. Like, that was a big momentum swing in there. They had some of it, but they continued that with some big plays on special teams, and they obviously do a very good job there, and um, that continues to show up just uh, as part of the third phase or one of their phases and, um, of what they're able to do with, with their offense and defense. So, um, overall, you know, right now we're, we're getting into the, the film. We're looking at everything. We're getting the plan put together for Tuesday, and, um, this is why you play. Like you look forward to weeks like this to come and do a game and be at home. And I know our crowd is going to be great. Um, looking forward to that, and we're going to need to be. We need that home field advantage. Uh, so you know that place should be rocking. And you know our guys will be looking forward to being out there and playing in front of them. Um, so the work we do and, and uh, the mentality we bring to this week is going to be extremely important to our success. And you know everybody should be excited about the opportunity and the challenge that we have in front of us. So questions. First question is from Phil Marshall. <laughs> a big part of what you hear about Georgia is the talent and depth they have really on both lines of scrimmage. How do you deal with that? I mean, is, is it possible to even scheme for that or do you just have to say you're going to have to win your, you're going to have to win your battles? <laughs> well, yeah, that's part of it. You're going to have to win uh, some of those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Uh, they do have very good depth. They're very good up front. Uh, you still have to scheme for that. So you, you just can't give up on that because they have good players and they have depth. You're going to scheme. You're going to have a plan. 
and then you're going to work on uh, the things that you have to do that week in order to make that play or you know that that plan you have uh, with your offense successful and um, or defense. So all those things are just. It's a continuation of, of our preparation, our fundamentals, the work that we do, how hard we do it, and, and then knowing that you're going against some really good players and know those guys uh, have shown from what we've seen to go out there and play at a high level, then you got to prepare yourself to do the same thing. And so it's all those things, and you, know, you just have to make sure that you're getting that done uh, yourself, you're getting that done with, with your side of the ball, and then making sure that's happening consistently throughout the week. But uh, yeah, they're very good. They're very good up front on both sides, and uh, the line of scrimmage is where it's at. And so, you know, we have to do a, a better job this week of making sure that we're prepared for what we want to do on the defensive line, what we want to do on the offensive line, and then, you know, we'll find out on Saturday where we are. Michael Giddens. <clears throat> uh, Coach, can you update the status on Tank Bigsby and Owen Papo didn't go on Saturday as well? Tank seems like he may be a little dinged up or dealing with some things from, from previous games. No, um, Owen didn't play. I hope he does this week. Um, you know, I hope that he would have last week as well. So it's just, it kind of comes down to, to game time. Um, as far as Tank goes, no, he's fine. Um, and, you know, everybody that was on that trip was, was, able to play. We hope that Owen was, and we'll see where he's at this week. Uh, I'm fully expecting to be out there and ready to go. Jason Caldwell. <clears throat> Brian, the, the, you guys have talked about using tight ends, uh, using the backs in the passing game. That was a big part of LSU. Uh, just what have you seen out of those groups coming together as receivers, and, and how important is, is that to kind of being an extension of the running game, especially when you play a team like Georgia? I think when you play any team, you got to have those – and your, you know, the tight end showed up. Um, you know, we had some drops in the game that, that we have to clean up, and that just goes back to our habits and practice and the things that, that we have to do fundamentally just to catch the ball and the techniques that we use. But the wide receivers, um, tight ends, running backs, I mean, they're all going to be a part of what we're doing in the pass game. And, and certainly, we'd like to run the football, uh, but when we throw it, you know, those guys are all going to be involved. And Sean Shivers was a big part of the game plan. Uh, he showed up on third downs. I think he had five third down conversions in that game. So, Sean, it was great to have him back. He's playing really well, knew what he's doing out there, had great energy on the field, was making plays, you know, had a couple that just weren't the easiest catches, but really focused on it and was able to to get us the first downs. Um, you see Fromm. Fromm had a few catches in the game, had his first touchdown catch uh, on the scramble. And so, I mean, there was a lot of good things from those two groups there and then uh you know as wide receivers um you know it goes back to just being consistent it goes back to the consistency piece for all of us but um you know we made some plays in the game at the tight end and running back position which is good we need to keep utilizing them and then <clears throat> get our wide receivers uh involved in there and they did make some plays but uh, more consistency from that standpoint and then you know, just continue to build on what we've been doing. Build on this last game. Hey, what did we like? What did we see that worked for us? Uh, what are the things that we can do to get better? What are the personnel um, that we need to have in the game? And really focus on that. And then, you know, still continue to run the ball. That doesn't take anything away from that. We still want to run it. And, you know, towards the end of the game, we were able to, when um, Jarquez Hunter, you know, hit the big run, that created a, a spark a lot of momentum in there, and then we're able to finish that drive. But um, you know, I think some of those throws allowed the run game uh, the ability to kind of get going, and, and uh, you know, we were able to make some plays at the end of the game, which were big for us. Mark Murphy. <clears throat> yeah, Coach, could you talk about the importance of getting off to a good start this week after playing from behind the last three weeks in the first half? Yeah, well, that's not ideal. You know, we're not challenging ourselves like that and saying, hey, let's get behind and try to really dig ourselves out. That's not the mentality we want to go in with. And yeah, like every team in America, we want to start fast. I think that's something that we have got to do a better job of. Um, you know, and it's it just comes down to, um, you know, execution by everybody. Uh, we have to have really good plans to start fast. We've got to execute. Um, we've got to have that mentality coming out of that locker room. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I don't know, sometimes guys got to feel their way around <clears throat> and, and just see, I don't know, maybe see how hard the other team's playing. But, 
you know, when your mindset's right, you come out, you're ready to play. And you're ready to play at your highest level, whatever that is, whatever you're capable of. Uh, and some guys did that. Some guys didn't, but some guys did that. But as the game went on, you know, we got better. Uh, the key is, you know, we want to start faster. And we want to play that way through four quarters, not three. And, you know, that's still, that's a challenge. I think it, I think all that is, is how you come out to practice. It's how you uh, get yourself prepared in meetings. <clears throat> you know, there's some guys that sit in meetings are on the edge of their seats and they're taking notes, they're locked in, they're answering questions. And you got some guys you got to remind all the time to get the notebook out and sit up and pay attention and, you know, what do you expect on Saturday? Like, if that's how you prepare, then you're not just going to turn it on on Saturday. you got to turn it on <clears throat> every single day. And, you know, then Saturday is just an extension of that. But um, I think some of that has to do with, you know, just the slow starts. And, uh, you know, we better figure that out because we, we've had to come back and, and we've been able to do that. But, um, you know, that's not a good formula. You want to come out and start fast and you want to play hard and you want to keep – keep yourself in the game, uh, if not put yourself ahead in the game and then continue that and finish a game and you know, we'll see where we're at this week and you know I'll know more about that on Tuesday. Our guys come out there and you can tell when they come out of that indoor and we get on the practice field, um, there's guys that are going to be running out there, there's guys that are going to be walking and you'll have an idea of how we're going to start practice and you know the emphasis will be there again, start fast, be every single day and uh, we have to get it done. We can't just talk about it. Nathan King. <clears throat> hey, Brian. With what Bo was able to do in that game, just how do you guys as a coaching staff go about evaluating that and trying to, I guess, hone in on, on some of the strengths you saw? Is it is it more scramble drill? Um, just how do you take some of his you know, Im improvisation and, and, and make it a strength moving forward? Well, yeah, scramble drill, that's from day one. That's something that we've installed even back in spring. You, you know that's going to happen, not just because it's Bo Nix, because of any quarterback in the country is going to have to scramble. So you want to have some type of answer. Um, his ability to scramble, we saw it. I mean, he's, he's very elusive and did a great job in that game. Um, you know, again, that's not how the play's drawn up, but there's going to be things that uh, guys are going to do in games where they go and make plays. And that's exactly what he did. And, there, and there's some structure to it, you know, where guys have a chance to get open and try to find the open area. Uh, but we'd like to be able to set our feet. We'd like to be able to um, get the ball out of our hand. And sometimes the defense has a lot to say with that. Um, and they did. They provided pressure. But Bo made some great plays. He got out of he got out of uh, you know some tough situations and made things happen on some fourth downs. <clears throat> um, you know, he ran the ball well when he needed to. Um, there was a couple design runs in there, but he ran the ball well. He made plays uh, with his feet when he had to. And I thought, you know, when he got a chance, you know, we protected well. He could get the ball out of his hands and uh, threw the ball well. We had some drops in there that we have got to make uh, those catches. And so moving forward. And so um, there were some good things from that standpoint. But you look at him, and the guy, the guy can make plays. And, um, <clears throat> and he did. You know, but that's not – how you want to draw everything up, but there is that ability. So you, you continue to work those things. They happen in practice. And then, um, you know, hopefully we can continue to capitalize on some of those, those plays and games. But um, we want to put the plan together where he can, he can go out there and just operate, play quarterback. And then when things do break down, you know, be able to go make some really good decisions and some plays, if that's possible, um, and continue that moving forward. Bill Cameron. <clears throat> well, Nathan asked, asked exactly the question I was going to, but I uh, don't want to miss an opportunity to ask something. So, Coach, uh, if you would, um, the challenges of facing that Georgia defensive front, which has been dominant, obviously using Bo's legs, what other things do you, uh, um, do you have to try to incorporate in the challenges of facing that Georgia front? Yeah, their front seven is really good. Jordan Davis, N'Kobe Dean, those guys are really good players. <clears throat> um, they're physical up front. You know, everybody wants to try to run the football, and so you still want to be able to run it. You got to be able to handle those guys up front. We got to do a great job at O line, tight ends, uh, being able to get up to those linebackers as well, so you can run it. Uh, so that just in itself is a challenge. They play hard. They've got good technique. They're physical, um, and so that's you know what we have to make sure that we're prepared for as we go into this game. 
no different. I mean, I thought, <clears throat> you know, you're playing some good teams. And, you know, we saw that against Penn State. We've seen it against LSU. Um, you know, we, we saw guys, you know, even against Georgia State, playing hard on the defensive front. And, you know, a lot of defenses, that's where, that's where it's set up is your D-line and your front seven. And I think a lot of teams want to be set up like that. And then your back half, you've got good players back there, and they can move those guys around and, and do some different things with them. So from an offensive standpoint, um, you know, we have to practice at a level where, you know, we prepare ourselves for that and still be able to run it and protect and, um, and just know that those guys are, are going to pose a challenge. And every single play, we've got to be ready for that. So uh, how you prepare yourself um, is you go out there every single rep in practice that you get and, and you try to play hard and you try to make sure that, you know, you're fundamentally sound, you're doing your job, we've got the right calls and everybody's on the same page so that you can execute whatever your assignment is. And you're going to get a one-on-one -on -one and you got to find a way to win the one-on-one. -on -one. That's why you do individual. That's why you spend time in the weight room. That's why you do all those things. So at some point when you get a one-on-one, -on -one, that's your chance to use some of the techniques and things you've learned, but it's also, you know, you just as a, as a football player, that's your chance to try to win that one-on-one. -on -one. And that's a great challenge. And I think why a lot of guys play the game is when you get in those moments, say it's me and you, and, you know, you get to go out there and challenge yourself to try to win those battles. Jordan Hill. Brian, I want to ask if uh, you anticipate TD being back this week, and regardless if he plays or not, just how important is that front going to be in trying to create pressure like you guys did against LSU? Yeah, I don't know if, if uh, TD will be here or not this week, um, and I'll leave it at that. As far as our front seven goes, no different than what I just said. You know, they asked me about George's front seven, and it's no different for us. we we got to play really well on the D line and at linebacker at the linebacker position on the edges with our guys. So that that's no different. Um, you got to set yourself up to, to play the run. Uh, you got to put yourself in a position that, that you can get some pressure. And uh, that's no different than I think any other team in the country really. And it's just a matter of really playing hard, playing with great technique, uh, understanding what it is that we're trying to do and how we're trying to attack from a defensive standpoint. And then just flip it around, you know, those one-on-one -on -one matchups. You know, that's why you, you do all that work is to try to win those one-on-one -on -one matchups when you get in those situations. And that's, that's the challenge as a football player. When you do, um, you're trying to make a play. You're trying to make something happen. You're trying to do your job, but you're also trying to make a play and win that one-on-one uh, -on -one that you're in. So uh, that'll be, you know, the focus and a continuation of that really going into this week. It hasn't changed week to week. we just got to get better at it. That's, that's really what it comes down to. And, and a lot of what I've said every week is um, really the same things. we just got to keep getting better in the areas that, that we keep talking about every single week, that these are the things that are going to get us where we want to go. Um, and, and that's got to be the focus. And we, and we can't skip over that until we can get some of those things really fo really focused on, uh, honed in, and we get everybody better at it and, and doing it at a consistent level. Um, you know, then you can get on to, you know, a few other little details. But those are the fundamentals of the game that, you know, every single week you got to stay focused on. Ben Gerondo. <clears throat> Brian, like you said, I know the early starts aren't uh, – or the, the – slow starts aren't ideal, but it, it seems like the last two weeks, especially on defense, uh, you know, there'll be a few chunk plays early on and then really settling in and, and locking opponents down and getting better throughout the game. What's the key to that? And, and from your perspective, how do you see Coach Mason sort of making game adjustments and work through those things with the players? Yeah, I think Coach Mason, the defensive staff, I think they've, they've worked well together at halftime and able to communicate what's happening. I think they're doing that as the game goes on. Um, you can hear them. You know, there's, there's a lot of communication that happens during the game of just seeing how the offense is trying to attack you. Uh, there's really good offenses that defenses have to face. And every single week they have a plan of, of how they're going to try to attack that defense. And, um, you know, I think one, from a, from a defensive standpoint, like you got to be ready to play. You're on point, you're on high alert for just about anything early in the game because the offenses have, 
they have their plays. Uh, they probably had their scripted plays. They probably rep those, and, and you know they know that that plan going into the game. Um, I think there's, there's you know probably a few offensive coordinators that just kind of pull it out of their out of their hat and just call plays. I mean they have a plan. Let me just say that so they have a plan going into it. So you got to try to figure that out from a defensive standpoint, but. Also, like you just you got to come out ready to play. I think that's a big a big part of it. You got to come out ready to play. Um, you know, understand. I mean, there's there's going to be some some plays that they execute. They're going to get the ball to some of their playmakers. Uh, you got to tackle, and you got to be in the right position. You got to be in the right gap. You got to do the right things in coverage. And so, as the game goes on, then you see how how we're operating. And sometimes it's not what the offense is doing. Sometimes we might have screwed it up, and then it's just getting it right. And, you know, it's not so much about them as it is us at times, too. You get it just right, whatever that position is or leverage, and that changes the outcome of the play, and then you're able to, to be more successful on the defensive side. But you got to see that. And so back to the staff and the players, you got to see that. You got to communicate it. You got to know it. You got to know the scheme and how you're supposed to play that scheme against a lot of different things on the defensive side. And then be able to make those adjustments very quickly and go, all right, that's it. This is what we need to do. And that's just, it continues all the way through the game, especially on the defensive side of just that process until the game's over. Brian Stoltz. <clears throat> Coach, first, I'm uh, happy there were no fires or earthquakes down in Baton Rouge this week uh, for you during your first trip. Uh, second, Georgia uh, only uh, passed the ball. I think 11 times this past week uh, with Stinson Bennett, a quarterback. Is there kind of two game plans that you have for a defense league going against one for JT Daniel and one for Stinson Bennett as far as their abilities? Probably so. I mean, there, there's some of that. Um, but again, I, you know, you ask that question, is there, is there two separate game plans? I mean, you have a game plan. I think you understand that there's different players and it's not just the quarterbacks. I mean, look at when they put different tight ends in the game, when they put different tailbacks in the game. You know, there's there's things that, from a defensive standpoint, you need to be ready for when they're utilizing different personnel. Quarterback is one of them as well. Uh, but you're going to have a structure. You're going to have a game plan going into it, and there's going to be tweaks and adjustments that you make from it. Um, but the most important thing is that you know, we play sound, physical defense, and, you know, we have our guys in the right position that we communicate and, you know, that we do a good job in, in tackling and take advantage of our opportunities when we can with some one-on-one -on -one matchups um, and find ways to win those. So uh, as far as how much they run it, I mean, you know, I don't know what their offensive game plan is going to be against us. Um, they seem to be a team that, you know, they got good balance. Uh, they've got good personnel, and you know they got two really good quarterbacks, and they're able to to get guys the ball. So uh, that's running, throwing. Um, you know, we're we're ready for all those things, or will be by the end of the week. And then just you know, most importantly, you know, what are we doing? Where where do we need to be? Uh, what's our process and communication each and every play? And how do we get ourselves lined up and ready to go out there and just get all 11 guys doing their job in the game? That's that's going to be the most important thing on that side of the ball. Brian Matthews? <laughs> uh, yes, Brian. I uh, want to ask about a couple of guys that got some extra snaps on Saturday at LSU. Uh, Jalen Simpson and Echo Leota. What did you see out of those two guys on defense? Yeah, it was good to get uh, Simpson out there and play. I thought he played well. And uh, we needed him. So he did some good things in coverage. So that was that was a positive. Um, Eku was good to have him out there. I mean, this is why he came here to to be in the game. So he did he did some things off the edge that were positive. Um, and I also think that his presence out there and both those guys, I think that helped us on the defensive side because um, it shows that we have some depth and it shows that some guys can step up and play in those positions and you need that. I think that's one of the keys to, to being successful is you've got some good depth and good players at positions so guys can get in and out of the game. And, um, you know, even too, they 
some guys might do something just a little bit better than the others. And so maybe that's, you know, what we need from that particular player and that coverage or at that time, whatever the situation is. So getting both those guys in there. But I thought Eku got, got some pressure on the quarterback. There were some good things he showed off the edge. Uh, and then Simpson being in there showed some good things of just being able to, to stay with the receiver uh, in good coverage and, and be in the right position. And so this week we build from there. We take that experience from those two players in particular. They take that. They add it to what we're doing this week. Uh, helps us with our depth. Helps us with our game plan. And then at the same time, too, I mean, if guys are playing well, helps us with our competition on our team where I think that brings out the best in everybody. you got a little competition uh, for positions, and you know maybe we can be just a little bit better because of that. Coach, our last question is from Mark Weiser. Coach, I wanted to ask you about why you wanted Mike Bobo on your staff, and, and how hard was it to pull him away from South Carolina, where he already was on staff? Well, yeah, I've said this about Mike. I got a lot of respect for him, and I got to compete against him at Boise State when he was at Colorado State. So I watched the things he did offensively. I've uh, been able to, you know, get with him before you know we were ever head coaches when I was at Texas, and we talked about quarterback play. It wasn't it was some scheme, but it was also you know just talking about teaching the quarterback position and the fundamentals and, and those type of things and. Uh, you know, he and I feel very much the same about a lot of those things when you're teaching that position. And I think that's an important part of playing well at the quarterback position. And then, um, you know, just the philosophy, you know, of, of taking, you know, things that we've both done and how do we apply that to Auburn and how do we create this Auburn offense. And, um, and so that, you know, that's been good. You know, it's been good to, to sit in there and, and have conversations about, you know, different play ideas and what's going to fit, what's going to work best. Um, you know, we're getting to know as the season goes on, you, you kind of see things with your own personnel. Uh, and I even think that not even just being, you know, um, new, I think every year you just, you have different players. You have different guys that, that step up. You have different levels of ability that guys develop over time. And, and you learn that as you go, throughout the season. There's some, you know, seasoned guys and all that. You kind of know what to expect, but that's not always the case either. Some guy had a great year the year before, and, and maybe it's not going as well because um, everybody knows who he is, and, and he has to elevate his game. The same thing that that player did the year before is not good enough for the next year. There's got to be more that's, that goes into it. So uh, he understands that, and, you know, I think we see things um, – you know, a lot the same when it comes to things that we want to do on the offensive side of the ball. And the staff has really done a good job of, of also providing input information. And so it's not just, you know, one guy. It's it's the staff. It's everybody. It's, it's kind of bringing everybody's ideas together and deciding this is going to be the game plan. This is what we feel like will help us succeed and be the most successful in the game. And, you know, we put that together. We practice that. And then come game day, you know, that's that's where as a play caller, you get to look for those things that are going to help us create the momentum that we need to go down there and score touchdowns. And, um, you know, bottom line on offense, I mean, that's the goal. You score touchdowns. You know, you're always trying to go out there and score. You're always trying to put points on the board and um, field goals are nice. And we got a hell of a kicker and he's a great player and we have got to do a great job for him and we got to protect and we got to do all those things better because he can he can put points on the board. But. You know, from an offensive standpoint, the mindset is, you know, from everybody in, on that field and, and in that staff room is score points. We want to score touchdowns. So how do we do that? Uh, that's the goal every single day. That's what we're trying to do every single practice. And, you know, we got to do more of that. We got to do it earlier. And so that's a great challenge for us this week is we go face a really good football team that's undefeated. It's got a hell of a coaching staff. You know, we have to do a great job from our staff to put our guys in that position to get touchdowns and, and go make plays and start fast and be consistent through four quarters and find a way to win. All right, Coach. Thank you for your time today. Okay, thank you.